you are about to experience a life-changing moment you won't leave the same the same way you came cause he's in how very midst you will be to the Lord again. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's been so good to us. We welcome you. We greet you in the name of our Father, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us here at the Word and Worship Church as we come together for no other reason but to lift our hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord for he is so worthy to be praised. Let's give it to the Lord once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to 
want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers, and we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. We just want you to know today that the Lord loves you, and we love you too. Amen. Because of that, we just give God all the praise, even as we go to God in prayer this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Now, Lord, even as we go into this service, we, go for no, we come for no other reason but to magnify the God of our salvation. But, Lord, when we look over our lives and see the many blessings you have bestowed upon us, we can truly say that we are blessed and we do have a testimony. And that testimony is there's none other God like you. So we want to give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We serve a great God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he was a small God, small God with small praise would be in order. But the Bible said, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. So as we come and as the praise leader come, we ask you to join us as we lift our hands and praise the God of our salvation.
if he's a great God, give him a great praise. Come on, Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I said, I'll bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall be in my mouth. Let's first wish our Father a happy Father's Day. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I'm talking about the daddy that woke you up this morning and the daddy that started you on your way. Come on. Every man in the building, we say happy Father's Day, happy Daddy's Day, happy Papa's Day, happy Grandfather's Day. Now that we got that out the way, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise. Come on, let's welcome our men of praise this morning.
gotta find yourself a praise and a reason to elevate him. You gotta find a reason to magnify him. saves. Well, you just tell two people what that name is. Come on. That's the name of Jesus. Come on. Headaches disappear at the name of Jesus. Come on. Attitudes get out the building at the name of Jesus. Bills get paid at the name of Jesus. Come on. Appliances will start working in your house in the name of Jesus. Your car will start working. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Spouse will start loving you again. Come on, at that name of Jesus. Come on, your best friend. Come on, will start speaking to you again at the name of Jesus the Christ. Let's give our men a praise and our musicians a hand. Thank you so much. Amen. These are not the mighty clouds of joy. Come on, these are the men of praise. Amen. These are the men of praise. The men of praise. Not the women of praise. Come on, the men of praise. The Bible says, oh, that men would thank him. Oh, that men would exalt him and celebrate him. We congratulate every father in the building. All fathers, come on, just stand on your feet. Come on, all fathers in the building. Come on, sisters, give it up for them. Come on, give it up for them. We say happy Father's Day. See, they all not on the court. They're not all in jail. They're not all in the court systems in prison. Come on. Men of God praising God because he's God. We say happy Father's Day. And we also say happy Juneteenth. Amen. Come on. Amen. It's good to be free. Amen. And know that you're free. Amen. It's a bad case when you come on with me free and still in bondage. Mm -hmm. The bird cage, the cage is open, but the bird won't come out because he can't get it in his mind that he has been liberated. So we do thank God for this holiday. I keep telling my wife we need more holy days and less holidays, but we'll take them any chance that we can, any chance that we can. Let's do some brief announcements on today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Leonard. Thank you, Hope, so much for opening us up this morning. If you're not too stingy this morning, amen. 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 What size suit is that, Rev? Amen. You're wearing it today. God bless you. Amen. You're supposed to be in all black. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you, Reverend Leonard. I am. And everyone. In case you did not know, we did purchase the building on last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. to say from leasing to owning and God has performed a miracle and when you obey God it speeds things up amen you will get there uh, with an anointing on your life and you'll start to walk in the favor of God um, people don't mind you having favor as long as you don't walk in it amen amen they don't mind you having a coat uh, Joseph but just keep it in the closet amen don't start wearing it to the mall, because then we get jealous. Amen. God is into favor more so than he is into flavor. People are into flavor, but God's into favor. Share that Facebook page. Share that page. Every time you share the page, you are sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ. Any first-timers in the room? Any first-timers in the room? Amen. Amen. Any first-timers? Amen. God bless you. Amen. 
Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Amen. Uh, amen. We have the Hardy family. We have Dr. Terrence, who is one of the directors of Rowan College University over education and eternal affairs. He'll be speaking briefly this morning, giving us um, some insight on Juneteenth. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Hardy family, for coming out. God bless you. You can connect with us if anyone is in the building and you have not connected with us. 856-462-0075. Next slide, Kendall. Next slide. Amen. Amen. Next slide. Okay, Tuesday at 7 p.m. we'll be here. I'm continuing our series entitled Increase, Increase, Increase. Somebody shout increase. Increase, increase. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next Sunday, put it on your calendar. I need you to with me. Amen. Music ministry, choir, church. We will be going to New Bethel on 7th Street. That is at 3 p.m. They keep calling me every day. Say, are you coming? I say, we are coming. We are coming. Thank you so much. We are coming. And that is on June 26, 3 p.m. Um, now, Andre, you're getting you're getting married on Friday. Amen. God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 We will be celebrating with him on Friday. Keep, keep Andre in prayer on Friday. What time Friday? Four o'clock. All right. Amen. Amen. Next slide. Next slide. Amen. Shell, can you come up real quick? Amen. Amen. Let's welcome our first lady today. because it's been a while since our women have had a chance to gather together. Um, I want you to save the date because on Saturday, July 9th at 12 noon, we invite all of, your, all of the women to come out and join us for lunch and Christian fellowship. The word will be imparted by our own sister Lucille Morgan. Amen. Amen. We will worship together. And we're going to challenge you to focus on accepting where God has planted you. Whatever your situation is, wherever God has you at this current time, whether it's that job, that address you live, the person who you are in a relationship with, the church that you are, God wants you to honor him and to give him glory in right where he has planted you. So it may require you to change your perspective to accept where you are right now and understand there's greater coming. If you would just be patient and allow God to root you in his word to help you to grow in your faith so that you can begin to flourish and bloom. Amen. So that's just a tidbit of what's going to happen that day. I invite you to come out. More specific details will soon to follow um, within a week or so. Amen. So save the date, Saturday, July 9th. Amen. Amen. All right. Kendall, is that our last slide? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's welcome our men of praise as they're coming again to this music selection. <laughs>
blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Thank you, God. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. God's got a blessing. 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 All right now, you're gonna say it. I hear you. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. All right now. Ah. God's got a blessing. Mm. All right, all right. Uh huh. God's got a blessing. Let's help him out, y'all. Let him out. Come on. God's got a blessing. 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 heard that? God's got a blessing with your name on it. I don't know about y'all, but I hear God's got a blessing for me. Woo! Gets me, gets me all smart up on the inside, y'all. Come on. Come on. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God. Yeah. All right, let's, let's come on. Come on now. God's got a blessing. 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 Let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. God's got a blessing. 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 Yeah. How many 
people remember James Way and Violin? You remember James Way? Break me down. Any people remember James Way? I'm gonna go way back. How many people remember two guys? And I'm, I went way back. Uh, two guys, Diane had a layaway department. Okay. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, Sister Val, we would go back all the way in the corner. Amen. By the dressing room. And uh, my mama had a package for me. Y'all keep y'all still here? And uh they couldn't find it, and, and I told the lady, uh, my name's on it. Amen. <laughs> I said, Chris, I said, we put our name on it. She said, what's your name? Come on, y'all still here? Amen. Because treat my name was on it, it was reserved for me and only me. There's some things in the house of God. There's some things under the sun. There's some things under heaven that God says, I got a blessing for you. And it's got your name on it. I got a blessing with my name on it. Give it up for Tyree Jones. Hey, you did it, Tyree. We got to move, we got to move, we got to move. All this talent behind me. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. Amen. This time we're going into a very quick Men's Day panel discussion. A Men's Day panel discussion. Since our men of praise are already up here, we're going to use them today. Amen. One more time, let's welcome our Men's Day panel. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. The Morris family's in the building. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, JC. Um, all right. On this Father's Day, um, we just want to pour into some men. We want to pour into some fathers who are presently a father. We want to pour into some men who potentially very soon will be a father. And uh, we have Tyree. We have Brother Anthony. We have Ty, Brother Fred, and Brother Shannon. Before we get started, real quick, uh, how many people like dad jokes? Dad jokes, dad jokes. Amen, amen, amen. All right, amen. Tyree, give me a, a one line, a quick, a quick dad joke if you got anything today. Talk in the microphone for us. All right. Um, what do sprinters eat before they run? What? Nothing, because they fast. Get it? They fast? What do sprinters eat before they run? Nothing, because they're fast. How was that one? How's that? All right. Now, you know we always have a winner. All right. Come on, Brother Anthony. Uh, what time is it? I don't know, but it's getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? It's in the dark. Amen. <laughs> Come on, Brother Ty. Knock, knock. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Billy, silly, open the door. <laughs> L'Oreal, pray for your daddy. Amen. Amen. Come on, Brother Fred. Worst snowstorm in history. The people had to be led out of this blizzard. Will Smith led them, but they lost him. So what did they do? They followed the Fresh Prince. Uh-oh. Brother Shannon, it's on you. What you gonna do? I don't think I'm trying to <laughs> Why do men wear two pairs of socks when golfing? They may get a hole in one. Why do men wear two pairs of socks when golfing? They may get a hole in one. All right. All right. So it, it was out of Ty, Tyree and Fred. Who, who do you think? <laughs> okay, that was just an icebreaker. Um, on, a serious, on a serious tip, uh, we understand that there are no perfect fathers. Amen. God is not looking for perfection, but he is looking for progress. There's only one perfect father, and that is the father that lives in heaven. Amen? That is the Amen. father from above. Amen. Amen. 
But being a father, sometimes um, we have done some incredible positive things in the lives of our children, and then sometimes we have missed the mark. Um, I'm going to start with Shannon on this one. Shannon, what advice can you give us, or what is there... What have you done in your life where you could say, it was nothing but net, I got this one right. Um, I did this right in raising my children. If you can just share one simple principle, something that you were very effective in as a father. For me, wherever I went, I took my kids. I always wanted them to see that I was doing something positive and I was never doing anything negative. And when you have your kids with you, Nobody else can tell them anything. You should be, I was always able to talk to my kids, you know, and um, give them good advice. If they, were going to, if they were going to get any type of advice, they was going to get it from me Amen. and nobody else. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother Fred, same question, nothing but net. Okay. You know I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do two. The first thing is, I always look for opportunities to say yes with children. Look for opportunities to say yes. Yes empowers, yes builds trust. No is too easy. So look for opportunities to say yes. The second thing is to model what it is to love a woman in front of children. If I could say anything about my father is that he gave me the greatest gift that I never knew, and that was to see him love my mother. So I wanted to do that as well. So any opportunity that I have to physically touch my wife, Amen. to say complimentary things about her, I will. Amen. Model. Amen. Mine's is a little different. I grew up without a father, so I'm still learning to be a father. I'm teaching my kids to be around. As their father, I'm always in their life. And I'm teaching them that you need to pray. Just pray. That's it. Amen. Be present. Be present and teach them to pray. Amen. Brother Anthony. Well, my father always said we got enough knuckleheads in the world. We don't need any more. So I always try to teach my kids discipline and, and, and good morals and, and to respect others. And that's why I believe I got all net. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on, let's give Anthony a hand. Tyree, same question. All right, I'm a young father. I have, I have four small kids. They're underneath the age of six. So for me, um, mine is setting the atmosphere. Um, this generation is big on music and uh, visuals and games and stuff. So with me, I take the opportunity all I can get to play gospel music in the background. So whether it's Todd, uh, uh, Todd Delaney, Kirk Franklin, wh whatever they have you, I play the music in the background so, so they can get used to constantly being in touch with God. And whenever they come and ask to listen to music, it's always, Daddy, can I listen to the Hallelujah music? So um, for me, it's setting the atmosphere, definitely. Amen. 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 One of the things I th think that I've done well with my children is I show them what a godly man looks like in church and outside of church. Amen. Amen. Uh, when they understand that Christianity is real on Sunday and that Christianity is also real on Monday, they will understand that Jesus is real every day of the week. Amen. 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 Okay. This one's gonna be a little uncomfortable. It may pinch because now that was the one that was nothing but net. But now, um, fellas, how about the one where you shot an air ball, where you shot a brick and you missed it and you say, if I had another opportunity to do this again, um, what would I do differently? Shannon, if you can be transparent and say, you know, this area, I failed, I missed it, I blew it. I think, I think, um because I was, you know, even with Olivia and my other boys, now I'm, 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 I'm strict. I'm, I'm really strict. And sometimes I don't listen. And so I'm learning to, since my, my boys are grown men now, and I have my daughter, I learn, I'm learning to listen when she has something to say. 
You know, my wife reminds me all the times, that's not what she was trying to tell you. And so I have to really humble myself and really listen to what she's trying to Amen. tell me. Amen. Listen to your children more. <laughs> listen to your children more. Anyone need help in that area? Anyone need help in listening to their children more? That was like, not me. <laughs> Amen. Brother Fred. Amen. Again, I'm going to cheat two things. First, reinforcing the no that my wife gives. Reinforcing that. Not overriding it in front of a child, but reinforcing it. Uh, I have a bad habit of allowing a child to do something that I know my wife said no to. Okay? And that's not good at all. There was no consistency there. The second thing, I didn't model good nutrition in front of my child. You know, McDonald's, Burger King, no, uh-uh. It, it doesn't cut it. So that was a, a terrible model. A house divided cannot stand. Amen. And we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices. Amen. Amen. So we got to watch what we eat in front of our children. Wow, that's, that's awesome, Fred. Ty. Okay. Unlike you being strict, I'm a softy. I should have been more stern with my sons, especially my sons. I was more stern with my daughter than my sons. So if I could do it all again, I would be more stern with them. That's all. Amen. Train up a child the way that they should go. How many uh, parents are not too strong when it comes to disciplining? Fellas, anybody? Kind of lacks in that area. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Anthony. Uh, well, um, over the course of my uh, marriage, uh, which is uh, unfortunately down ending, but um, being in and out of the, the marriage during the whole 20, almost 20 years, just being in and out. And so that inconsistency of being there in the household, raising my children, that's where I believe, I, I really missed the mark. Really not believe, but I, I know I missed the mark there. So in that, you know, it, it did a lot of damage to my children. You know, walking away when I should have stayed and I should have fought. You know, even though we didn't argue like most couples did, but still, even me walking away from it still did a lot of damage to my kids. Wow. Amen. Um, now, whose who strength said they were present? Was that you, Ty? Yes. So strength said, Ty said he was present as one of his strengths. Anthony is saying he was absent. Amen. Sometimes, fellas, we can work too much. Sometimes we can be trying to pursue our goals too much and leave our kids astray. Uh, Tyree? Um, for me, it's uh, leaving the outside factors at the door. Um, work, specifically for me, is, is a very stressful um, environment. And sometimes I have to humble myself. And my wife helps me out a lot of uh, calming myself down before speaking to the kids because of something outside, the, outside of what they're doing. Is, it can influence what, what my outcome and my behavior and my um, anger. Um, so luckily, my kids are still young, so God's still working on me with quelling that anger and being a softer spoken voice to my kids. Amen. 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 An area where I think I have missed the mark is trying to hold my kids to a standard that I cannot keep myself. Did you catch that? Amen. And I'm telling them to bring home straight A's. And, and I used to burn my report card before it even got to the house. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, I am telling my kids to make sure that their room is clean. Yeah. And my room sometimes can look like a helicopter has just landed in it. Are y'all catching this? Amen. And sometimes um, I just require a lot, and I know that I slack in areas that I'm expecting them. So Kendall and Kennedy, daddy wants to do better in those areas. Amen. Because guess what? God no longer holds us to the law. Amen. Amen. We are now covered Amen. by grace, and there's no longer that standard that we have to meet. 
So we thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen. Let's give our men Amen. a praise. Amen. Amen. Good looking, strong, educated black men. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. Uh, Reverend Leonard, get the oil. We're just going to make them deacons all right now. Amen. amen. <laughs> this time we're going into our morning offering. We're going into our morning offering at this time. We give for three reasons. We give, number one, because he's our Savior. Oh, yes, he is. Number two, we give because he's our wonderful source. Number three, we give because the scriptures tell us to give. If you're paying by cash app today, you can hit us at Word and Worship 7. If you're paying by Givelify, hit us at the Word and Worship Church. If you need a tithing envelope, you can lift your hand in the air, wave it like you just don't care. Come on. If you need a tithing envelope, sow your best gift today if you can. Maybe you missed last week and you said, you know what, I forgot to give last week. I forgot to tithe last week. God never stopped blessing you. He never stopped making a way for you. Double your tithe, double your blessing. The Bible says that where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. Where his treasure is, that's where his heart is. It's not where his heart is, that's where his treasure is. It says where his treasure is, that's where his heart is. I can tell what you like to eat, not by watching you eat, but by looking at your bank statement. Did you just catch that? Amen. You can tell me you like KFC all you want, but your bank statement says Chick-fil-A, 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 because where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. All you got to do is follow the bank statement. <laughs> I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. What does debt stand for? Doing everything but tithing. How many people need to get out of debt? You need to get out of debt. You need to get out of debt. I want to be a debt-free believer. Amen. We sow because we're blessed, and we're blessed because we're so. Therefore, we are so blessed. I want to pray over the head, the hand, and the heart. Amen. Come on. If you're on Facebook, continue to give. Continue to share that page. Your seed is in your hand. It's going in good soil. And I want to bless and pray over the sower. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty, wonderful, glorious, matchless name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for our jobs. And God, when gas is going up, Father, you still are Jehovah Jireh. God, when bread and, and, and detergent and eggs and bacon are going up, Father, you are still Yahweh. God, when mortgages and interest rates are going up, Father, you are still making ways out of no ways. God, we thank you, God, for being our protector. So, Lord, right now, take the seed, take the soil, take the sower, Father. Take our head, hand, and heart, Father. And give us, Father, a spirit of gratitude with grateful spirit and a grateful heart. So we plug it in, we pour it in, we place it in, Father, in ministry to do the work of the kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Greeters are coming at this time. If you are paying electronically, you can continue to give.
Everyone have a chance to give? Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, musicians. Amen. At this time, we are bringing to the podium in honor of Juneteenth to just give us some insight. Dr. Terrence Hardy, he's coming uh, to the Word of Worship Church. He's coming from Rowan College University, where he is the, the, the director and executive over external affairs and education. Let's receive at this time Dr. Terrence Hardy. <laughs> First of all, I would like to wish everyone a happy Father's Day. I would like to also thank Pastor Holm and his lovely first wife for inviting me here to speak this morning. And I would also like to acknowledge my wife. It gives me great honor to stand before you today and talk about the meaning of Juneteenth. Two months after the Civil War had ended, and two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation that President Lincoln issued, in January 1st, 1863, there were still many people enslaved. Enslaved people were still fighting for their freedom. They were still running away and committing acts of day-to-day -day resistance on plantations because enslaved people were still living in free without freedom. But on that day, June 19, 1865, General Gordon Granger of the Union Army galloped into Galveston and proclaimed a proclamation. He simply stated, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance to this proclamation from the executives of the United States, slaves are free. This involves the absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between masters and former slaves. Juneteenth stands to remind our nation that through the African-American experience, included brutal chains of slavery, emancipation did come. And it broke the physical shackles free. See, this just also reminds us that God cares about the oppressed, the hurting, and the abuse. God's compassion and acts delivers and restores the physical and spiritual which is shown in a many bi biblical examples. From the 400 years of slavery that the children of Israel endured in the Old Testament and the testament of the Greek widow in the New Testament. Through his son, Jesus, God gave the world an internal emancipation. Jesus is the savior whose life, death, and burial and resurrection ushered in a spiritual moment that provided physical, spiritual emancipation from the bondage of sin and the fear of death for anyone who believes in him. And as I conclude, in our story, God has shown up and offered redemption and resurrection through his love and deep compassion for us. So you can now start to live free because we have all had freedom through Christ. Thank you. Amen. 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 Let's thank Reverend Terrence, I mean, Dr. Terrence. Amen. <laughs> It's prayer time. Amen. It's prayer time. We'll keep you. Amen. Amen. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. Let's come to the altar. Let's stand.
nothing like the peace he gives to me. The altar's open. I can cast my cares in trouble. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. I can run. I can run to him and find safety. Nothing like the peace he gives to me. I can pass. so that we can overflow and pour into someone else and to teach them about you, Lord. We already know you'll make everything all right, God, but it feels so much good to say it over and over and over that you will make everything all right, God. We're grateful for your love. We ask that you continue to just watch over us and to condition us, Father, in our faith. God, we ask that you just give us the courage, Father, to encourage others to make their way to church, Father. That way they can get the gospel, Father. Sharing the gospel, Lord, is bigger than just being in the church. It's going out. It's being around others, Father, who don't believe. Especially the non-believers, Lord, we need to touch them, Father. Sometimes just the testimony, Father, can help someone else get over that bridge, Father, to say, you know what? I'm gonna give God a try. Lord, we trust in you today as we trust in you every day. And God, we are grateful that you have given this world fathers because we know what it's like to have you as a father. And because you are in us, Father, we're able to share that experience with our children and the young daughters and sons of this world. Lord, we just are so grateful. Also want to pray over our pastor, Lord. Thank you for such a great leader. Thank you for allowing us to have a great pastor, Father, who is a passionate father. We're also grateful, Lord, because we always hear the saying of we have the best first lady. But God, we know we have the best pastor, too, that we can have. And we're grateful for you to that, Father. We ask that you just touch this congregation, Lord, that we all can use our gifts and to move together as the body of church and to complete whatever task you have ready for us and our pastor, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. job, Steve. Thank you. Keep hope. Kids clubbers, kid clubbers, kid clubbers, kid clubbers, kid clubbers, get going, get going.
Thank you, Steve, for that powerful prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, First Lady, again for these decorations. Amen. Amen. Once we get our screens in here, amen, we could just pop everything on the screen. It takes hours to sometimes do this work. Amen. But renovations will be starting soon. Uh, men are coming at this time with their final selection, their final music ministry. And then we will go into the Word of God. Anyone need a word today? Anyone need a word? Yes. Come on. It's coming for you.
grace and his mercy you don't even know the half of my situation you don't even know the half of my testimony Don't use your hands, just use your mouth, your lips. The Bible says give them the fruit of your lips. Oh, bless your name, God. Come on, let's fill this house. 
with glory. Let's fill this house with praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good to see you, Twa. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Heals me when heals me when I grow. Strength, strength where I've been forever. My God, hit it. Come on, singers. What's his name? What's his character say about him? your presence. We're before your presence. You have given us access to come to your throne room. Not only can we come quickly, but we can come with a bodacious and audacious spirit. Thank you, God, for the victory. You told us to come to you when we need mercy. You told us to come to get grace when we need mercy. You're sending us to the throne room of grace to get mercy. Anyone need mercy? Come on, come on. Anyone need a little bit of mercy? Mercy is anew every morning, Father. I need mercy in my mind. I plead the blood of Jesus against my problem and my situation. By his stripes, I am 100% whole. I am 100% healed. Absolutely no weapon that is formed against you, no plot, no demonic device, no witchcraft, no sorcery, no trickery shall be able 
to prevail in your life because of the blood of Jesus. God, we have spoke to you, Father, now, Father. Speak to us, Father. Be clear, Father. Convict us, convert us, change us, consume us, Father. Touch the preacher, Father. Touch my mind, Father. Touch my hands and my lips and my teeth, Father. Touch my heart, Father, Father, that we might preach, Father, righteousness in the name of Jesus. If you can do me a favor while I'm praying for you, if you can just shoot pastor up a 10-second prayer, come on. Come on, just shoot pastor up a prayer, come on. Pray that I would speak to you. I don't need to know what you're going through, but pray that I would speak right about it. Pray that I would speak right to your situation and your dilemma. God, speak where they will know that you are Jehovah Jireh, the God that sees what I need. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, in your vision. Our ears are open. Our heart is ready. Our mind is alert to receive the incorruptible, infallible, true, and only living Word of God. If we give you our full attention, you will supersede our every expectation. In Jesus' name, we pray that the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. is preaching time. Amen. Where my amen corner? I just want to know. Where my amen corner? I got an amen corner. I got one here. Amen. Amen. Where my big mouth people? Amen. Come on. I need people with a big mouth. Amen. They ain't scared to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm-hmm. You just can't have a big mouth in the hallway. But you got to have a big mouth in the holies of holies. Come on. You just can't have a big mouth on the boardwalk, but you got to have a big mouth in his sanctuary. You just can't have a big mouth in the bedroom. Uh-oh. But you got to have a big mouth. Come on. Because when the praises go up, I said when the praises go up, anything can happen. I said Come on, come on, I'm ready, I'm ready. I need 10 praisers, I need five worshipers, I need three shouters, I need two runners, and I need one dancer. I need 10 praisers, five worshipers, three shouters, two runners, one dancer. Come on, that was just a praise rehearsal. That's just a praise rehearsal. Come on. Because when the word hits you, something ought to move, and anything that's dead needs to be buried. But I woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus, and I know that he's able to supply. Have a seat, because I think you're going to get up again, but have a seat. Hey, man. <laughs> come on, come on. I can't fool with y'all. My dad's making ribs today. Come on. I got to get to the house. Come on. Hey. Yeah. 
John chapter number 12. John 12, 24. All right. All right. John 12, 24. Oh, that's a real hallelujah. That's a, that's a been in a pot hallelujah. <laughs> yes. John 24, Jesus is speaking, he's talking to his disciples. We are still, Tierra, in our increase series. Increase, God wants to increase so we can decrease, so he can release. Good to see you, Brother Michael. We're getting closer and closer. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen. Everybody say increase, increase. Decrease. decrease, decrease, release. release. That's the formula all month, increase, yeah. decrease, release. Okay. It's Father's Day, so it's going to be a little tricky because I got to hit the fathers, but I also have to hit the mothers. Amen. <laughs> and I got to hit the sisters and the brothers. Amen. And I got to hit the children. Amen. 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 Let's read it like you had your... Uh, Let's read it like you had your frosted flakes this morning. Amen. Come on. One, two, three. Let's read. Very truly, I tell you, unless a I want to use L'Oreal. Good to see you. I want to use for a thought on this morning the power of a pop. The power of a pop. Okay. Before we even get started, can we just celebrate all the fathers, the fathers, the dads, and the pops in the house? Come on. Come on. If your pop is in here, come on. Just the power of a godly pop. Amen. Amen. Um, well, since all the amateurs have already told their dad joke, now it's time for the professional. Amen. 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 Now it's time for the profession. Uh, little Johnny has fixed his father, uh, Father's Day breakfast and brought it up to the room and brought the pancakes and the eggs and the bacon. And then he also brought him a cup of coffee. And inside the cup of the coffee, uh, the father noticed that there were three little green, you know those little soldier army men? Come on, you saw a Toy Story. Come on. And put three of these in his cup of coffee. His father said, um, son, what did you do? What, why did you put these in my coffee? And he said, dad, he said, the best part of waking up is soldiers in your cup. <laughs> <laughs> they hate him. Get rid of the gator. Get rid of the hater. Amen. <laughs> June, get, get that gift card to me. Amen. <laughs> The power of a pop. Um, my assignment, Shannon, on this morning, on this happy Father's Day morning, is to give you the power and the importance of having a pop in your life, a godly pop. Um, do you know that every human being has had a father? but not every human being has had a mother. Think on that, think on that. Just tell your neighbor real quick, come on, clean it up for me. Come on, help me out, come on, okay. <laughs> Adam and Eve had a father, but they had no mother. Everybody said, hmm, 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 never thought of that. Um, and as a father, God had the responsibility to raise his children. Right. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go quickly over these points. Kendall, give me my next slide. I don't even know what it is. In Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says that he took man and he laid his hands on him. Do you know that man is the only thing that God created where he just did not speak, but he actually touched? Everything else he spoke to. But when it came to man, he laid his hands on him. The Bible says he took the dirt and the dust and formed man. Point number one, if you are going to be a godly pop, a godly father, Risa, a godly father, Terrence, you have got to lay your hands on your kids. You need to lay your hands on them when they leave your presence. I'm not talking about to smack them or to punish them, but to lay your hands on your children when they leave the house, when they come in the house. You need to lay your hands on your children, come on, to hug them and to hold them, come on, and to kiss them. You need to lay your hands on them and to form them into something. Are you thanking God for a father that touched you properly? Because men, when we don't lay our hands on our children, when we don't teach them how to be intimate and hug, come on, in relationships in the house, T-Bone, Peanut, and Pookie will begin to turn. Come on, are y'all catching this? We'll lay their hands on them, and they will get the wrong idea. But my children, come on, they know what a right hug feels like. Come on, they know what a godly, come on, hug feels like. They know what a father's hug feel like. Point number one, you've got to lay your hands on your children. Point number two, in Genesis 2-7, after he laid his hands, he breathed life. And when he breathed life, Reverend, man became a living soul. So after I lay hands on them, you've got to be able to speak life into your children. Speak Jesus. Speak positive fruition. Speak positive manifestation. Speak life into your family members. Tell them that they can do it. Tell them that they are somebody in Christ. Tell them that they are the head and not the tail. Lay your hands on them, Father. But not only lay your hands, what will we do? We will speak life. Amen. Genesis 2.8. He takes... Adam, and he puts him in the garden. He puts him in an atmosphere to learn. Andre, he doesn't say anything to him. He just places him in an atmosphere to learn. Fathers, create an atmosphere where your children can learn something, okay? Build bridges. Come on, build, build opportunities where your kids can get information and opportunity. Because watch this, the church is not the place where we are to teach your kids. You are to teach them at home. Okay? And if you teach them at home, the church is the extension of the house. If you teach them at home, come on. Michelle and Fred won't have to do so much work at school because the school is an extension of the home. Lay your hands on them, speak life in them, put them in an atmosphere that is conducive to learning. Michelle, they put Adam into the garden and he watched the trees grow. God planted the seed and then he started to water the garden and the water had four streams. It came from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Educate your kids on four streams of income. Dr. Karen and I grew up in a household where our parents ain't tell us nothing. I said, Mama, how much you make? None of your business. Yeah. Daddy, how much is this house? None of your business. Can I get a witness, anybody? Uh -huh. Daddy, how much we pay a month? None of your business. So then, Sister Bev, when I go out into the world, I have no point of reference because nothing was brought to my attention at the dinner table because they said that's grown folk business. So as a result, as a result I don't know about interest rates. As a result, I don't know about mortgages. As a result, I don't know. And listen, you will never get in life what you deserve. You get in life what you negotiate. So you've got to come to the table with some knowledge and some learning and some understanding. I'm preaching better than you're looking at me. Lay your hands on them. Breathe life into them. Put them in an atmosphere that's conducive to learning. Genesis 2.15, after he puts Adam in the garden, then he places Adam in the garden and he gives him the responsibility now to lead. He says, now that you have learned, now I'm giving you the responsibility to lead because leaders are learners and learners are leading. I mean, you cannot be a leader if you are not learned. Amen. Amen. It's very dangerous to have someone who is in power but has no principles. 
So you have leaders who are learning. God will give you mentors, but he will also give you tormentors. And you've got to know the difference. Lay your hands on me, speak life into me, put me in an atmosphere that is conducive to learning, and then let me lead. Amen. This generation, I'm going to get in trouble right now. Let me talk to Facebook because I don't want you throwing no tomatoes at me. This generation has been learning, 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 and learning, but nobody is allowing them to lead because we're saying, come to my Bible study, come to my class, come to my church, come to my workshop, come to my seminar, come hear me, come hear me. And we've been learning, 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 and learning, but nobody is given the opportunity to lead. I've been coming to class. When are you going to let me teach the class? No, just come to the class, learn, learn. learn. We've got to be willing to let people come. Come on, somebody says you got to teach, you can give someone fish, or you can teach them how to fish, but you got to take them fishing. What good is it teaching me how to fish, but you won't take me fishing? Yeah, I know how to do it. I'm waiting for you to give me an option and a shot. Lay your hands on them, breathe life, put them in the atmosphere to learn, put them in a place to lead. But then Genesis 2, 7. He lays down the law. He says, okay, now that you have learned how to lead and I've laid my hands, so he says, don't touch from this tree. In other words, fathers, you've got to lay down the law. Come on. And you've got to give them some discipline and a strategy. You've got to tell them this is what you're able to do. This is what you are not able to do because a leader who cannot keep the law will become ludicrous. Mm -hmm. A captain with no character will develop chaos. Sound familiar? Anybody? Yes. You've got to be able to keep the law. And if you can keep the law at the house, yes. amen. Mm -hmm. If you know how to keep the law at the house, amen, you'll know how to act in the classroom. Yes. Amen. Yes. But if you don't keep the law at the house, you'll be cussing folk out at the classroom. Yes. Amen. And if you keep the law in the classroom, come on, it can keep you from getting in trouble in the courtroom. Yes. But if you never learn the rules at the house or the classroom, now you're in the courtroom. But if I teach you the rules in the courtroom, come on, teaching you the rules in the courtroom may keep you out of prison. But if I never teach you the rules in the house and never teach you the rules at church and never teach you the rules in class and never teach you the rules of court, you might, have, might wind up in prison. Yes. Yes. Lay down the law. Genesis 2.18, watch this, June. He says, um, something's wrong now. Fathers, you have to be able to see the lack. He says, Adam is missing something. Last L, he says, Adam is lonely. Fathers, everybody say, here it is. Here it is. Be able to discern without it being discussed. Say it again. Be able to discern without it ever being discussed. Adam never complained about being alone. But God said something and said it's not good for Adam to be alone. Your child might not ever tell you that they're thinking about having sex. So you've got to be able to discern what's not being discussed. Your child may never tell you that they are having suicidal thoughts. So you have got to be able to discern what's not being discussed. God says, Adam's got some issues going on. Anybody can find the problem, fathers, but we need fathers who can find the problem, but also Fix the problem. So God says he's lonely. Last L, he says, I'm going to make him a lady. Yeah. And you're not ready, fellas, for a lady until you can first keep the law, <laughs> learn how to lead, mm -hmm. um, learn how to learn, mm -hmm. have the life and the breath of God upon your life and the hand of God covering you and protecting yeah. you. These are principles for a godly pop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good. Lay your hands on your family members. Yeah. Speak life into them. Mm -hmm. Teach them so they can learn. Give them an opportunity where they can lead. Amen. See that they can keep the law. 
and see what's lacking so you can provide what they need. That's the Father's Day message, but that's not the text that I've, I've, I've read today, is it? Because I just talked to you about the power of a pot. Kendall, next slide. Verily, truly, I tell you, who's speaking? Jesus. Jesus is truth. So whenever Jesus says, very, verily, verily, or truly, truly, that's like saying, like, for real, for real, though. I mean, that's like saying word is bond because he's already truth. So whatever Jesus says is truth. But when he adds one truth, I mean, you can count on it because Jesus says it. But when he adds two truths, and this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, unless a, a can, can y'all see this? Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground, falls, humbles themselves to the ground, a situation that you really don't want to be in, and, and get buried, and die. Three things. You see it? Look at the text. He says, unless you fall, humble yourself to a ground, into a situation you don't want to be in and be buried, and dies, this does not happen. It will only remain a seed. He says, however, if it falls to the ground and dies, it will produce many seeds. Jesus is giving the illustration, watch this, Steve. Jesus is giving the illustration, and he is saying that I am like a colonel, all right? I've got to fall to the ground, I've got to humble myself to the cross, and I've got to die. And once I die, it will lead to salvation, and salvation will lead to imitation. Mm -hmm. He says, if I do not fall, if I do not die, if I do not humble myself, he says, there was no reason for me to leave heaven. I should have just stayed in heaven. Sister Val, he is saying, what I have done, I want you to do. I want you to humble yourself. You're going to have to get buried in a situation that you don't like that's uncomfortable. And you're going to have to die to yourself. You're going to have to die to your agenda. You're going to have to die to your plans. And when this happens, salvation will lead to imitation, and you will produce more people like you. And Jesus says you can count on it. Verily, verily, truly, truly. All right. I'm looking at you guys because y'all like, uh, Pastor, you got to come stronger than this today. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes. Yes. Here we go. Now we're cooking with oil. Amen. Uh, uh, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground. Um, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, few, few are chosen. Um, so after you have the calling, um, you have the choosing. Everyone on this planet has been called. Everyone has an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. But he chooses the ones who he know will say yes to the call. Because in his foreknowledge, he knows, he doesn't pre, he doesn't pre wire you to give you your answer. He knows what you're going to say. I asked Michelle to marry me. Do you know why? I knew what she was going to say. I didn't ask you. I had every intention that she would say yes. Amen? Many were called, but few were chosen. So God chooses you. Now, there's, there, there's other packs in here, but God chooses you after he calls you. 
And once he chooses you, uh, you are now, you believe, ready for ministry. Because I've been chosen, and I'm called, I'm anointed, I'm gifted, I'm talented. But after you're chosen, he puts a cover on you. Because it's important that everyone has a cover. A cover is not punishment, it's protection. Oh, we're going to do the slow clap this morning. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right, all right. Y'all on the front row. Come on. Um, um, I started preaching in Sydney in 1995. My dad did not let me do communion. I could do no weddings until I was ordained. And I tried to tell him I was called and chosen. But he was covering me as protection, not punishment. Jesus is 12 years old, and he gets away from his parents. And where does Jesus go? To the temple. And what does he start doing? He starts teaching. And what does Mary do? Come into church. And what does Jesus say? Didn't you know about, I'll be about my father's business? Hope Mary said, boy, if you don't grab your book bag and get out of here. She did not say, oh, I'm sorry, did I? She said, get in the car. She broke up Bible study. Jesus is 12, but it's not time for him to go into his ministry. And then at 30, she is ready for him to go, and the tables turn, and Jesus says, it's not my time. Yeah. So there's a time to be called, a time to be chosen, a time to be covered, but then there's also a time to be released. Let me get this open here. Time to be... Release. Oh, it's a great feeling to be released, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I got ordained. Now my dad can't tell me what to do. See, when you listen, children, when you live it, at home, uh, you have to obey and honor your parents. When you leave the house, you don't have to obey them. You just have to honor them. Mm, that was heavy there. Yeah, yeah. Dad can't tell me what time to come home anymore when I have my own keys. But I still honor him, and I say, Dad... Have a, just, just take a nap, Dad. Just take a nap. It's going to be all right. You all right? You don't, you, don't, you don't dishonor them, but once you have your own place, your own keys, you still honor, but I no longer have to obey. But young people, once you're in the house, if you're still paying your, if you're still under their roof, you obey and you honor. Yes. So now, Brother Mike, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll because my covering is off of me. How many people want some popcorn? Anybody want some popcorn? Anybody want some popcorn? Here you go. Okay, let, let's, let's, let's get at it. Since you want some popcorn, because you're ready to be used. You're ready to be used. Amen, right? Aren't you ready to be used? Yeah, yeah, you're ready to be used. You're called, you're chosen. And many times, Reverend, people, because they've been called and chosen and the covering has been released, they are now ready to go into ministry. Pastor, I've been called to preach. I told Shannon, come to Bible study. You think I was just going to put him in the pulpit? Tyree, people will leave churches because they have an anointing, they have talents, and they have gift, and they are not being used because they want to go right from the choosing to the uncovering. Here, you, you want some popcorn? Oh, you want some popcorn? Why not? Why not? Come on. Sure you want some popcorn. You're ready. Come on. You got the favor of the Lord. You've been to Bible college. Amen. Come on. You've been preaching. Come on. When you sing, people just fall out in the spirit. When you pray, the heavens open up. Come on. Aren't you, aren't, aren't, aren't you ready? Aren't you ready? See, when you give people too early, when you give your gift too early, you will make people sick. When you put people in the front line too early, you will break people's teeth. So when you are ready to be used, understand. You say, Pastor, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to be used. You don't go to the congregation. You go get cooked. Yeah, yeah. Because there's the calling, there's the choosing, there's the covering. And before you get to the congregation, you got to get cooked. All right. um, just by way of illustration, I need another bag open here. Okay, so um, you, got, you, you don't go from here to here, you go from here to here to the testing. 
What's the name of the sermon? The power of a pop. God says, I will put you in a fire. Oh, so you want to be used. Uh, where are my glasses at? Amen. So you want to minister. So you want to serve. So God says, okay, I've got to throw you in a pit. I've got to throw you in an uncomfortable situation. Because, see, see, because you're at this stage right now. And you don't want to wait on God, and you don't want to wait on the Lord. And God says, I know you're gifted, and I know, come on, I know you have a great call, and you have a purpose, and God ordered your steps, and before the foundations of the world, come on, he knew your name. But God says, if you want to be truly used, I've got to send you Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I've got to send you Joseph. I've got to send you Jonah through some hell and some high water. And I don't know how long it's going to take, because sometimes it takes different times for different people. But you have to realize that every trial you went through, every time you hear a pop, understand that God is beefing you up. He's building you. He's equipping you. He's edifying you. He's making you fruitful. Every time you hear a pop, God is doing something in your life. Come on. Every sickness, there was a, a pop. Come on. Every time you got fired, there was a pop. Come on. Every broken relationship, there was a pop. Every time you got fired, there was a pop. Every time the enemy came on your street, there was a pop. Mm. Junie, the next time we're going to put a microphone on the microwave. All right. All right. God is doing something in private places. And sometimes you can't see what God is doing. But he's popping me. Because there's a power in the pop. And I believe that some things, Nina, are getting ready to pop in your life. Diane, I think some things are getting ready to pop in your life. I hear the sound of victory. That addiction that you had to go through, God says, I'm going to use that as a pop. What you looking at, Kenna? What's good? Did it, did it go off? Oh, amen. Um, Kendall, next slide. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it goes through the fire with the spirit of humility, if it goes through an ugly situation with the spirit of humility, something's going to happen. Amen. Amen. Uh, Kendall, point number one. You will come out and you'll be filled. God wants to take you from being flat to being filled. Because when you go through the fire, he's developing patience, he's developing faith, he's developing hope. Come on, there's some blessings that you get by going through the fire. I know you're ready like this, but tree God says, I need you to go through a sticky situation. How many people want to be Filled full. Because if you're going to be fulfilled, you have to be filled full. All right, all right. This is what you were when you got saved, but once you go through the fire. Because there's a power in the pop. Point two. Oh, God. When you get filled with the Spirit and you humble yourself in downright dirty situations, just your presence in the room will change a room. 
people will start to smell the glory of the Lord on you. Come on, when you walk in the shop right, come on, the glory of the Lord will be all up. You don't have to say nothing. Come on, just your weight alone. Come on, just your credibility alone. A pastor told me years ago, Kent, Pete, there's an invisible wall. I'll never forget it. He said, there's an invisible wall from the pulpit and the pew, and people know when you've been with God. And I said, how do they know? He said, they just know. Because when you walk around filled, there'll be a spirit of expectation, a spirit of manifestation, a spirit of fruition, a spirit of supernatural, a spirit of healing on your life, a spirit of breakthrough on your life, a spirit of healing on your life, a spirit of signs, a spirit of wonders, a spirit of miracles, because I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Point three, Kendall. You'll become fruitful. You can't feed many people here. But God says, I want to take you from this. Yeah. I want to take you from being flat and cold. I want to take you and yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 God says, I want you to be fruitful. I know you thought you were ready before you went to the fire. But God says, I want to make you fruitful, where you can feed more people, where you can bless more people. Maybe you started out your Christian journey like this, and you're still like this. And God is trying to get you here. See, Jesus came the first time for this. But he's coming the second time. Yes, he is. Come on. <laughs> the first time he came, come on, the unsaved. Yes, sir. But the second time he's coming yes. for those. Now, now, Dr. Cannon, this is very interesting here because um, there's 300, how to do some homework, there's 300 uh, popcorns in a microwave bag. But there's always a couple. Come on. That come don't on. pop. Yes, sir. Y'all see this? Come on, come on, Pastor. And I don't understand why it didn't pop because it went through the same fire. It went through the same pandemic. Yes, sir. Went through the same COVID 19. Come on. Yeah. Went through the same inflation on gas prices. Yeah. Went through the same situation, but it did not pop. So I had to ask Siri, amen. Yeah, yeah. Why don't kernels pop when they go through the fire? And she said, Reverend, amen. She, sa she said, the reason some kernels don't pop is because there's not enough water in the kernel. And because the water moisture is too low, and you know water in the Bible represents the Word or the Holy Spirit. Because the water level is too low, the, the, the kernel gets hard, mean, come on, stubborn, come on, cantankerous, right? So when it goes through the fire, are y'all catching this? When it goes through the fire, it goes in with an attitude. It does not go in with a spirit of humility, and it comes out in a worse shape than it was before. And even if you put it back in the bag, and you put it back in the oven, and you turn it back on, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. I already tried it. I'm not going to waste three more minutes. Amen. Nothing happens at all because you have no word inside of you. You've got to go through every storm and every test knowing that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask. 
So the Bible says, Kendall, give me a scripture. Come on, just give me a scripture. He says, one must die. And you've got to humble yourself. Amen. But if you go through the fire, because check this out, ladies and gentlemen, all of us got to go through the fire. Amen. 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 Every person under the sound of my voice has got to go through the fire. We're all going to have tests, yes, trials, and tribulations. Yeah. Yeah. Young people, that's like saying quizzes, tests, and exams. Uh -huh. yeah. A test is when I know he's able. Yeah. Yeah. A trial is, watch this, I know he's able even if he don't. Are y'all catching this right now? But a tribulation is when I know that he's able, I know that the Father's able, I know that the Spirit's able, I'm in my word, I know how to pray, I know how to worship, I know how to live right. I need all my weapons working in a tribulation. Now, are you a seed that has never been born again and needs to die? Or are you a seed that Paul talks about that says, I must die daily? If any man be in Christ, he is a... All things are passed away behold, all things are become brand new. Yes, sir. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, yes, sir. the voice of an angel, with the trumpet, right? The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who are alive and remain. But guess what? That word and is not in the Greek. So it really says those who are alive Remain. Oh, y'all missing this right there. Boy, y'all missed that one. I'll say it one more time. Those who are alive, remain. And he's coming back, not for those, come on, who have never popped, but he's coming back for those that have popped. He's coming back looking for a kernel, come on, without spot or wrinkle. Is there a witness in the house? Can I preach it like I feel it? I feel a pop coming on. Because there's a praise in my pop. There's a praise in my obedience. And there's even a praise in my pit. Yeah. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And I hear the sound of victory. I feel like something's getting ready to pop off in your life. Somebody say increase. Somebody say increase. Somebody say decrease. Somebody say release. I hear the sound of victory. The Lord is my light. Pop. And my salvation. Pop. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall? I shall. Who shall? I be afraid, even when the wicked, even when my enemies, even when my foes came to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host in camp all around me, my heart shall not fail. Though the wicked and war shall rise up against me in this one thing, I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that thing will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. There's a power in a pop. I grew up in a house where we didn't have all these choices on what we was going to eat, and in June liked eating Rice Krispies. I didn't like Rice Krispies. I didn't like the way they looked. I didn't like the way they tasted. The one thing I liked about Rice Krispies, because how many people know sometimes you got to deal with some stuff you really don't feel like dealing with? And I didn't want to deal with the Rice Krispies, but one thing I did like is I would put my ear up to the bowl. Amen. And I didn't like what I saw. 
and I didn't like how it tasted, but I put my ear up to the bowl, and I would hear snap, crackle, pop, snap, crackle, pop. I hear the sound of victory, and I got the victory, not when I see it, but I got the victory when I hear it. And if God says I'm blessed, I'm blessed because there's a power in the pop. Something's getting ready to pop off in your life. Healing's getting ready to pop off. Blessings get ready to pop off. Increase is getting ready to pop off in your life. Will you give God a praise for what's getting ready to pop? Oh, give God a praise for what's getting ready to pop. There's power in my pop. Power in my mouth. If a colonel humbles himself, yes, sir. is willing to go through a dark situation with the spirit of humility and die, yeah. die to your flesh and your will and your attitude and your stubborn and die, God says, I'll take you from this yeah. and I'll take you to that yes, sir. where you can be fruitful you can have a fragrance and you can be filled I would love to be there when God transforms you I would love to see it are y'all catching us I'm tired of seeing you here yes you're saved but Christ wants you to die daily and he says I got to put you through the fire but when God gets finished with you, you shall come forth as pure gold. There is a power in the pop. Even when you don't like it and it's uncomfortable, God says, I'm getting ready to pop something out on your life. Increase, decrease, release. Let's pop up all over the house. Come on, come on, pop up today. Do you know that word when he says you'll be caught up? That word is snatched up. It's going to be a popping. When Christ comes back, there's going to be a popping of the saints in the twinkling of an eye. See, when you're a flat Christian and you don't have the Holy Spirit reigning and running your life, you come in with a different fragrance, a fragrance of, uh, a fragrance of, oh, no. But when you're filled with his precious Holy Spirit, we've got some world changers in the room. We've got some history makers in the room. Even when you leave the room, your fragrance and presence is going to be there. Y'all not going to believe this. Every time I pull up to a store with no people, I bring, I bring the revenue with me. My kids always say, Daddy, why when you walked in the store, everybody else drove up? The favor of the Lord. And when God gives you favor, don't change your flavor. Because, Lori, I'm coming out better, not bitter. How is it that some people are bitter through the pandemic and some people are better? How is it that some people are bitter through the sickness and some people are better? Because it's the way you go in and there's not enough word in you. And when there's not enough word in you, you go in cussing and you go in ragged and you go in mean and you go in crying. But God says when you die with the spirit of humility, you'll multiply and be fruitful to the body of Christ. If you're in the room and you know that it's time for you to start popping, it's time for you to start growing, come on. It's time for you to be tested and challenged. I want you to come to the altar right now. 
The doors of the church, every door is open right now. Christ, church, and change. Whatever you need. If I was you, I would run to the altar as soon as I can. Come on. Come on. Come on. Today, if the Lord is leading you to join our church, come on down front. You want to be plugged into a ministry where you can grow? I would love to be your pastor. I would love to see you pop. I would love to pour into you. I would love to see you better and stop being bitter. I would love to see you grow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give God a chance. Ken, I need Christ. I'm nervous. I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know how this situation is going to end. And I need Jesus to run my life. He's a wonderful, suitable Savior. If you need the Lord today, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Come on, just lift your hand. Hallelujah. Come on down, come on. Yeah, yes to me. Anyone else who say, I need Christ. I'm one of those colonels. Amen. Maybe you're in the room, you say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I ain't been popping. I ain't been doing nothing. You need to die daily. And Jesus says, verily, verily, truly, truly. He says, I'm not playing today. He says, you will produce a multitude of seeds. I just want a better walk with Jesus Christ. Are you here today? Come on, I'm ready to pop. I'm saved, but I'm not sanctified. You in the room? Last card. I want to be plugged into a church. I believe the Word and Worship Church is a great church where you can grow, you can go, and you can glow. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. Come on. Come on. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shaka. Brother William, you need the Lord, don't you? I know you need him. You know you need him. You already got him. He wants to take you because you're saved. But you need to yield to his will, Will. And God has you in the fire right now. Yeah, we praying for you. Your mama praying for you. Me and First Lady praying for you. And sometimes we can't take you out of the fire too early. Because sometimes we're trying to save people and get them out of the jam. Are y'all catching it? And they, they never wind up popping because we keep, they keep going in and we keep taking them out too early. And there's some tests and trials that you got to go through just to be made stronger. I want every man to just point their hands towards William. Come on right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever his situation is, Father, whatever his legal situation, Father, is, whatever he needs, Father, first of all, Father, Lord, we pray, Father, that will will align himself and be straight up with you. Lord, we pray, God, that you would anoint his head with oil, Father, anoint his mind, and we cast down every imagination, anything that exalts itself from the knowledge and the Word of God and the will of God and the way of God. Devil, you are a liar. We break the spirit of curse. We break the spirit of, 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 we break the spirit of brokenness. Did you hear what I just said? We break the spirit of brokenness. We break the spirit of brokenness, Father, and we release, Father, a spirit of healing in the name of Jesus, Father. We see what's lacking, Father, but also, Father, provide the answer. Give him the right people. Give him the right timing, the right day of the week. God, and we thank you, God, that you give grace to the humble, but you resist the proud. So we humble ourselves before your presence, and your word says you will exalt us in due season. Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord that you love him. Come on, lift your hands to him. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we thank you now. Not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, it says the Lord. Some things are getting ready to pop off if you trust them. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
right, we are done for the day. All fathers, you know what is waiting for you in the back. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tuesday, 7 p.m. We will continue our increase series. This next Sunday, 3 p.m., we will go to New Bethel and Violent. Please plan to attend that. We're praying for you, Andre, on this Friday. If our hearts and minds are clear, happy Father's Day once again. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Come on, come get your popcorn, fellas.